Hello everyone. Today I'd like to discuss a video that Steve Kaufman did and that popped up on my YouTube feed um, a few weeks ago. For those of you that aren't familiar with who Steve Kaufman is, he's basically a polyglot who creates language learning content on the internet and he's also the co-founder of Link or LingQ. Not sure what the correct pronunciation is. <laughs> In a video which I recommend for you to watch if you want to understand what I'm going to talk about today, I will put everything in the description, he essentially discusses the relevance of linguistics with language learning. In his video he makes a lot of points and I decided to choose the ones that to me seem to be the most important ones. But before I even start discussing the video I just want to clarify I've got no beef with Steve whatsoever. <laughs> I just thought that this video would be a good opportunity for me to discuss linguistics and how linguistics research works. To help me with the script of this video, I asked Mathilde from El Com Linguiste, which is a channel in French based around linguistics, to help me make sure that my information was both accurate and also up to date. So thank you very much Mathilde, your feedback was very helpful to make this video happen. <laughs> By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Kevin and the channel is Kevin Abroad and on my channel I do videos that have to do with language learning and I also have a MA in linguistics so I also make videos that have to do with linguistics every now and then. Why not? I like linguistics. <laughs> so let's get to the video now. In his video, Steve admits himself that he never actually studied linguistics and only read up on it. Of course, I don't know how much he's read on the topic, but to me it is a bit problematic because it shows that he hasn't got the knowledge to properly discuss the topic of linguistics, or at least in an informed way. And by the way, in this video I will be differentiating linguistics from language learning because they are two separate things. So I'm not saying that my knowledge of linguistics is perfect, but I like to think that with an MA in linguistics, linguistics I've got some awareness of what it entails exactly to study linguistics and to be a linguist. And you will see in this video that Steve's knowledge of linguistics falls short when he discusses Chomsky's theories. Again I would recommend that you watch Steve's video before you keep on watching this one. The idea of universal grammar is that all human languages share common grammatical principles. For example asking questions, nouns, adjectives, verbs, negation, etc etc. Chomsky tried to account for commonalities between languages by explaining that these grammatical features are already present in our brains unconsciously and are also innate. It wasn't exactly a new idea at the time but let's just say that Chomsky made it popular. As for most linguistic theories, there were and still are opponents to this theory but it's very important to understand that linguistics is not really meant to be a hard science like biology and all theories will have limitations. That is exactly why sometimes theories are revised to reflect new findings. Obviously, as you can imagine, it's a bit more complicated than that but I just want to try and simplify things a bit. Now, in my opinion, where Steve misunderstood the theory is when he says that all languages are different, therefore there's no universal grammar. But acknowledging that all languages are different doesn't really contradict the theory at all. Chomsky doesn't say at all that all languages have the same grammar. He just proposes that all languages have common features but that they will express them differently. To bring it back to language learning, when you learn a new language, this other language already has aspects or principles that you are already familiar with. For example, you are familiar with the concept of asking questions or using negation. I think it's pretty safe to say that as an adult who has a native language already, you don't have to learn these concepts for the first time when you learn another language. Another point that Steve gets wrong is when he implies that linguistics is not really based on observation. It's only partially wrong because in the case of universal grammar theory, Chomsky has been criticized for being a bit too intuitive and not thorough enough in his approaches. Aside from this specific case, any serious linguistic theory has to be based on observation in order to be viable. Indeed, it would not make a lot of sense for a linguist to come up with a theory not having observed anything or having tested it at least a little bit. Of course it's fine not to be convinced or agree with all the theories that are proposed by linguists, but a good linguist will always try to give reasonable evidence to support their theories. This, I hope, shows that linguistics is far from being just random and just made up. To be honest, I just feel like Steve has a negative opinion on linguistics in general. Finally, it is not true at all that linguists don't take into account emotions in their research. I have to say that I was surprised by Steve's point because it would be the same as to say oh this book about cats doesn't talk about dogs at all, that's weird. 
What I mean is that yes, of course, not all linguistics research will look at emotions if it's not the focus of their study. It doesn't mean that emotion is irrelevant, but when a linguist runs a study, they try to isolate aspects of language. So for example, they can decide to look at a specific age group instead of looking at any age group. There's a simple reason behind it, which is that if when running a study, you had to consider absolutely all aspects of language, then it would be huge, it would be all over the place, and it would just be a general mess. <laughs> And that is why in virtually all linguistics papers, you have a section called limitations, which will acknowledge some aspects of the language that the researcher has decided to ignore or just didn't look at in the study. But if you wanted to look at the emotional side of language, you absolutely could if, for example, you're a psychologist, a psycholinguist, or a specialist in education studies. So these were the main ideas I wanted to tackle, but I still got things to say. The reason why I decided to do this video was because a lot of Steve's points were based on misconceptions. He essentially simplified linguistics to the extreme by using one theory, explaining why he disagrees with it, and using that as a way to discard an entire body of research. I'll quote Mathilde from El Com Linguiste and say the old technique of the strawman. Linguistics is far from being irrelevant to language learning. Can you learn a language without any knowledge of linguistics? Totally. But can it help you learn a language? It most certainly can. There is literally tons of research on how people learn, process, and experience language learning. However, it's important to bear in mind that linguistics originally is not meant to help people like you and me, I assume, to learn languages. So in a way, it's not really fair to criticize linguistics for not directly helping people learning languages. Having said that, there are tons of aspects of linguistics that can actually help you learn languages better. For example, without linguistics, we would not have dictionaries or grammar books. We would also have no understanding of how teaching languages actually works. Linguistics is not just syntax. Linguistics can explore so many aspects of language, which in turn can give us a great insight into how we learn languages. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it, that you found it interesting. And if you did, consider subscribing and check out what else I do on my channel. I would like to thank again Mathilde from Elcom Linguist for helping me with this video. It was really helpful. So thank you, Mathilde, and I will see you later. Bye.